Welcome to Malpractice Podcast. Is it my turn? I don't think so. <laughs> Are you ready to get started? Yes, absolutely. I like saw you point and I was like, is that just a, a fun greeting or is that my turn? <laughs> yeah, I think it's your turn. I don't know. Honestly, at this point, what is a turn anymore? Yeah, what is a turn? I'm Jess, by the way, y'all. I'm Sydney. And this is Malpractice. And and welcome. And welcome to the show. And I haven't slept. I'm exhausted. <laughs> so if I make zero sense, excuse me permanently from all things <laughs> all responsibilities today i think that that should that should go at the top of every episode please excuse us for all things yeah um speaking of which i have a correction i said for some reason i said that elizabeth holmes in our last episode i said that she was 30 and someone corrected me on YouTube, and thank you for... It was like a gentle correction that she's 37. Well, I think you meant like she's I in don't her know 30s why. is what I really think you yes, meant. Yes, that's that's 100% what I meant. When I saw 37, I just rounded down. I was like, she's 30 I think you were like, what I want people to say about me when I'm 37 is that I'm 30. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. I am 29 as we speak, and I'm coming... This is my birthday month birthday now. Birthday month. And birthday month. And I want people to round down for me. Mm -hmm. So I am 30 and I forget all the time. I'm like, I'm 25. They're like, no, you're not. I'm in my 20s is what I like to say. So that's where that came from. Maybe a personal. Yeah, I think you're just like, (laughs) Elizabeth, you're going to go to prison, but. Like you're in your your thirties, so you're it's like in no your thirties. You're thirty. You, you're thirty esque. Yeah, you're thirty esque. Yeah. You're thirty ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Also, thank you, everyone. So many people have left left like nice comments and reviews and stuff in the last couple of weeks. Thanks for that. We love it. You're a bop. We appreciate it. If you, you haven't left a bop, us a review, no. I'm gonna say it at the top. Please do. We like it. We do like. We it. love we like feedback. Positive feedback. <laughs> yes, positive <laughs> feedback. I'm not saying. Okay, yes, I am saying if you don't like us, don't write us a review. Yeah, just or leave listen. a comment. Yeah. Talking to you. <laughs> if you hate it, get out. Get out of here. Go, go somewhere else. Uh Jess and I celebrated Halloween this weekend. We hope that you all had a very spooky and good so, Halloween. Yes, we did. And Sydney was like, oh, because I was like, Yeah, I'll go somewhere with you. I never go anywhere. So she was like, We're about to go. We've mentioned this before. She <laughs> never wants to go anywhere, and we did we go did. somewhere. We went to that, what was that, like a Harry Potter dessert bar pop-up? Yeah, yeah. Which, unsolicited feedback for them. Don't say it's a pop-up bar unless you have at least one alcoholic beverage. Yeah, yeah, that's my only we criticism. we was confused. Yeah. <laughs> they had like a mojito on the menu that was like a limeade. It was like a minty limeade, and I was like, that's, that's false lemonade. advertising. Yeah. That is, I'm suing you. If you call that it a rude. mojito, you better put some fucking rum in it, because I'm coming for you. Yeah, just fucking, come on. What the heck? Just come on. Just let us live. I was like, yeah. I mean, I got the best dessert, arguably. You really did. There. Yours was the best. We went with a group of people, and Jess, everyone was like, Jess's is the best. It was like a blood orange. It was so good. Italian ice situation. Whatever. It was but a But I will say there was no warning for the heat. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I touched the cup because it had a smoking effect and like burned the shit out of my hand. Yeah. And then I was mad. But then it was good. It was a balance. It was a balance. Here's a science pro tip. If you put dry ice in a cup to produce smoke and you put it in water, it gets really fucking hot. Yeah. So when the person you hand it to touches it, it's hot. I was like, what kind of Italian ice is this? (laughs) Why is my ice hot? It makes zero sense. I did not order this. No, I don't want it. Oh, and my sister um, this weekend, she was born on Halloween. I don't know. I was... (laughs) Halloween. She was born on Halloween. (laughs) Happy (laughs) Halloween. And so I always, I'm like, oh, you little treat. Because it's her birthday. Oh, but she, that's cute. Um, this weekend, she's engaged. So we actually found her wedding dress this weekend, too. Yeah. 
That's good. Got to say it at the top because last time I said that she got engaged at the end and she didn't listen all the way through. And she was like, you didn't say I was engaged. Well, that's on her, and number like, one. Check the facts, bitch. I did. Yeah. You need to <laughs> listen to the full episode. Maybe I should be mad at you. Yeah, I, I was. Of course I was reverse <laughs> mad. I was like, first of all. First of all, joke's on you. When I first started teaching, I would do this assignment where there was long instructions. And then at the end, it was like, just put your name on this and turn it in. Oh, nice. And so that one kid would be like looking at me like, oh, I read the whole thing. Everyone else is like filling it in. Yeah. And they're like looking at me, looking at it, looking at me, looking at it. They're like, what the fuck? I'm about to turn it blank. And I would yeah. be like. Hmm. Read the instructions. A bop. Because you see the one guy like put his name on it and walk down and you're like, how is he done? I just wrote my name. And then you read the instructions and you're like, God damn it. <laughs> that speed reader. He read, he read all his AR books yeah. when he was in elementary school. Yeah. Eric was allegedly an AR champion. I was too. <laughs> okay. I did blue bonnet books. I was like, oh, yeah. I had read every single book on the list. I was taking the test. I made 100. Then I didn't have shit to do the rest of the year. Yeah, that's dumb. Sucks. But I read them all. Do you remember when we used to get, like, assigned summer reading in high school? Yeah. And they'd be like, you have to, before you come back, you have to have read these books. Do you remember the book Silas Marner? Yeah. I, to this day, have never read that book, and I wrote an entire book report on it. It'd be like that sometimes, I guess. <laughs> and I literally think I used Cliff Notes. Yeah. And I used, like, the front of the book. I was like, this book is about aging and silas well, could be <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when we had to read um like the hobbit and lord of the rings oh hell yeah in ninth grade that was a bop so i have had those books on tape mm -hmm. my entire life like someone reading the books yeah. and when my parents would drive us to michigan yeah. we would listen all the way there to the hobbit and all the way back to lord of the rings every year since i was like two years old wow yeah so your girl has like those books memorized so yeah i did not <laughs> yeah. crack a cover and i've aced all of that because it's a literally i have them all in my head because you're like it's actually part habit. of my family history <laughs> i i swear to god i was like reading this <laughs> yeah like i know all of this i know everything that happens here yeah definitely i'm not even going to start I love the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit books when I was a kid. Oh. I was obsessed. So good. So good. Um, that and Harry Potter. I mean. Oh, hell yeah. If you haven't read Harry Potter as an adult, you are missing out. Michelle. Michelle. Talking to you. What up? <laughs> when Eric and I first started dating, I forced him to read it because I was like, this is my favorite thing. I have to know if this is going to be a problem or not. <laughs> What is Eric? What house is he? Hufflepuff, duh. Have you ever met Eric? He's kind of Ravenclaw-esque, though. He's smart no, as fuck. No, he's a puff. He's a puff down to his core. Like, he's taken multiple quizzes, and they're all like, you are the Hufflepuff. You're actually the mascot. <laughs> You're a That's exactly correct. He's a badger. What do you think, um, <laughs> badger? <laughs> what do you think Michelle <laughs> I was like, be? I think it's a badger. I could see Ravenclaw. I think she'd be Slytherin, dude. No, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think she's a Slytherin. I didn't want to say it. I like, I'm, I'm like 60, 40 Gryffindor Slytherin. So I have like strong respect for yes, same. Slytherins in general. Mine was like Ravenclaw Slytherin. But when you tell people that they're a Slytherin. They get like, offended. Oh, you think I'm a bad guy. But Michelle wouldn't know. She'd be like. What what language are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't slept. Listen. So I am a shell of a person today. <laughs> <laughs> I am unwell. I'm so I was like, Sydney, look at me. Look at my look face. Crazy. That's what she said. She put her face oh my right God. next to the Zoom camera and was like, look into my eyes. I literally put on the Zoom and I was like, this is why we don't record video and put it up because I sometimes look like this and people would be like, I'm actually filing a report for someone to come do a wellness check on you. <laughs> you are not okay. <laughs> I think I forgot to put on bronzer this morning and I look like a Victorian ghost. So <laughs> I would rather look like a Victorian ghost than whatever is happening on my side of the screen right now. <laughs> Just getting into the Halloween vibe. We're, we're like spooky for spooky? Halloween. <laughs> 
Speaking of Halloween. Let's do it. On this Halloween adjacent episode, I looked up the most horrible medical professionals and I picked one. Yes. And this is the face. First of all, this is the face of regret for a lot of reasons. Yeah. But this is the face of regret because he sucks big time. His name is Michael Swango. He is a creep. That's it. That's the burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've been. He sucks. I've read about this one several times. It's been on our list for a very long time. I'm so excited that you're doing this and I'm going to settle in and I'm going to get ready to be very creeped out because I don't know any of the details. He sucks so hard. So I will. I'm going to say this like he's a big gross creep. I'm I'm not including victim names in this episode because I actually don't know and or think based on my research that people besides there's one lady who went on and to like do an interview and there's a couple others that have been in interviews but yeah I think with the way he violated them I just don't want to like be a part of like re-victimizing them or like okay. putting their information out there so okay. I'm not gonna say names okay he's just like authentically trash okay so um just caveat also there is mention of um suicide in the episode so trigger warning yeah i will warn you right before we get to there that point too if you need to skip ahead but that it's just a blip on the radar of this story but it is in there and i don't want to i think it's a radar <laughs> but i meant radar yeah. let's start at the beginning which is also not a great place to start for him because the moment he was born the world got a little bit grosser oh no um joseph michaels i, I put wango but his name is <laughs> swango is a crazy last name anyway. Honestly, it is kind of cool, but, like, he's trash. Yeah. He was born October 21st, 1954, in Tacoma, Washington, to Mural and John Virgil Swango. But he was raised, like, in Quincy, Illinois. So okay. his dad was in the Army, and they moved around a lot. But his mom did divorce his father, and so they eventually settled in Quincy. As a young boy, he was, like, obsessed with death. He was fascinated with reading stories about the Holocaust. Uh-huh. And he kept scrapbooks of car crashes and murders. You can't see this? Scrapbooks. My jaw dropped to the floor. Like scrapbooks. That's yeah. creepy as fuck. Yes. If your child is doing that, get them help. <laughs> Hashtag get him help. Um he went to a Catholic high school, which is Quincy Catholic. Uh, boys high school uh, to be specific and he graduated valedictorian with an iq of 160 oh wow we hate a smart murderer yeah that's the worst <laughs> they're the worst he played the clarinet also which <laughs> i don't know anything about band I, I failed at trying it when i was in band um so he was a member of the band he was super smart even though he went to Catholic school, he was raised Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. After high school, he served in the Marines and was given an honorable discharge. So besides this, like, creepy shit of keeping scrapbooks, up until this point, he was fine, in theory. Like, no no complaints. Yeah, he's, like, allegedly a successful human. Right, except for the scrapbooks, which is, like, a major Except for the alert. scrapbooks, yeah. That's <laughs> that gonna... shit is creepy as fuck. Feels like that's going to come back. <laughs> yeah. We, keep, okay. we keep, keep that coming up. Yeah. Okay, gross. <laughs> so he ended up attending Quincy College, and he majored in biology and chemistry. And then he went to Southern Illinois University School of Medicine. At SIU, people started to notice he was, like, not quite right. Okay. So, for example, at some point in his collegiate career, he wrote a thesis about the poisoning death of a Bulgarian writer, Georgi Markov. People were kind of like, why are you writing that? <laughs> like... Why is that That's your thesis? A thesis? Yeah, he ends up being known as the poison doctor. So we see it all starts to make some sensington right here. Okay. Yeah. Also, can I just say, and this is just me, I feel like in medical schools, if you notice, if you're a medical student and you notice that someone is not quite right, it feels like that's a good time to like maybe. Maybe let someone know. So the because you don't want a doctor that's not quite the right. The problem with this story is that a lot of people did say something's wrong with him. Yeah, but the administration along the way like ignored people's concerns. That's such a fuckeroo because you see it over and over and over. Like in the podcast, Doctor Death, like they just kept yeah. passing him around because they yes. were like, "Well, eh, what are you gonna do?" 
We hate it. We hate it. And they just keep doing it. So. They just keep doing it. Swango. He was really smart. He graduated from Quincy Summa Cum Laude and got an American Chemical Society Award. Me too, bitch. But he was. <laughs> what? I got an ACS what Award. Okay, sorry. But <laughs> he was known as like academically super lazy. Okay. He even preferred working as an ambulance attendant rather than the focus on his studies. Side note, there's nothing wrong at all with being with working in an ambulance. Yeah. You literally save lives. Yeah. But from what I understand by my research, he literally prioritized that work over his medical school right. studies. Which if you're in medical school, you can't do that. Right. Yeah. And some like weird stuff started to happen around him during that time. Oh, no. Yep. So really, I think the problem is, like, he just wanted to be around dying people. Okay. Or people near death, which is why he liked... The ambulance, right. He had this, like, fascination. That's the opposite of what I like. You need the best people because you have to be calm. You have to be focused. You have to know things. Yeah. So also the fact that he was, like, not super into his studies is not great yeah. for his profession at this point either. So he was super fascinated with dying patients. So so fascinated. And many of the patients which were assigned to Swango to get checkups ended up coding or suffering life-threatening emergencies. And five of them, at least during that time period, died. Ah. Yes. My mouth is open. <laughs> At this time, nobody is like, that's his fault. They were kind of like, hmm, that's kind of weird. But nobody's like, he's killing people. Right. But I don't know why. I don't know why people weren't like, wait a gosh darn minute here. Because this was happening in like the 70s, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't know. They had a lot of shit going on in the 70s and they didn't really care about anyone, I feel. I think that it was also like, this is the problem, right, with, with these really evil people who do these like really awesome professions. Yeah. For the purpose of, like, continuing being evil, people are like, well, he he would never, he, like, literally works in an ambulance. Like, he wants yeah. to save lives. Like, it couldn't be on purpose. Yeah. When, in fact, it's, like, the means to do it on purpose. Right. You're, like, making assumptions about the person who chose that career. Right. And he, the people that he was assigned to in his medical, like, intern rotations were also getting really sick, like, uh, with no one understanding why at this time. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah, that feels like it should have been a red flag. I'm not going to lie. And I think that it would have been if the two institutions were talking to each other. Yeah. And honestly, that's yep. the thing about smart serial killers and smart, like, murderers yep. in general is that... He probably knew that they weren't that they weren't going to connect the dots. And he probably can talk himself if he's if he's like valedictorian summa cum laude, he probably can talk himself out of a situation. 100%. So even if it did come up like, hey, your patients are not well, he's like can probably figure out exactly what to say to get people off his case. Yeah. Right. But he did end up they did end up catching him in a little bit of a something. In his medical Ooh. school. So okay. during his OBGYN rotation, he was caught faking checkups. Like, in fact, his peers, other medical student colleagues, thought he was been had been faking checkups basically his rounds as early as his second year of med school. Okay, he just, like, wasn't going oh. and just putting things down because he was busy doing other Murderous things. shit. <laughs> they basically put him in, they were like, look, he he skipped his rotations. He's lying on his, his documents, his, like, medical documents for these patients. He's putting patients at risk. So they put him in front of a committee that came together to decide if they were going to dismiss the student or if that he dismisses. <laughs> right, exactly. Or if he was going to get a second chance. Ow, I just hit my door of my closet. I don't know if you heard that. I heard that, yeah. <laughs> he was allowed to stay in school one holdout on this committee. So if we can find out who that committee member was, that person could have saved a lot of people's lives oh. if they had just said, yeah, dismiss him. But they wanted to give him a second chance, which is stupid. Yeah. Don't give people second chances. <laughs> <laughs> no second chances if you're a murderer. No. Yeah. Period. I mean, but th at this point, they don't know. They're just like, oh, he's struggling and he's fucking up with rotations, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Still, I feel like that's pretty unethical to lie about going to your rotations and doing checkups on patients. Yes. And it's just because he wasn't, like, interested in that area. Right. Right. Thank God so. he wasn't interested in being an OB. GYN, can you imagine? No. The damage he did no. anyway, like this would have been terrible. Yeah. So they said 
fine. You can stay in school as long as you complete the OBGYN rotation. And he had, like, other assignments. They basically, like, gave him, like, extra work because he was trash. You would think, based on that, he wouldn't have been able to continue his medical education because this would be, like, the red X on his report. Alas, white men be getting away with things. So Uh he had a terrible evaluation from SIU. Scathing. They were like, this man is trash. But he still ended up getting a surgical internship. How? At Ohio State University Medical Center in 1983. How? Which would be followed by neurosurgery, I can't speak today, residency. So when he was working at the Rhodes Hall wing, the nursing staff noticed that he, like, had seemingly healthy patients that started dying without reason at an alarming speed. And each time this was happening, guess who was there as the intern? Yeah. Swanko. (laughs) Each and every time. There's this one story that a nurse actually catches him injecting some (gasps) random medicine, quote unquote, into a patient who became ill afterwards. No! Yes, these concerns were reported to the hospital administration, but the administration allegedly dismissed them, saying that the nursing staff was paranoid. Honestly, nurses are like the most overworked, most underappreciated people. I feel like if a nurse tells you something, especially if they're putting their neck out to like call out a doctor, you better believe them. Especially an intern. Fuck that intern. He's an intern. He's a baby doctor. No one cares about him. Yeah, fuck that guy. Right. And there's this other thing, right, that's like, I mean, we could really get into this tangent about how nursing staff at that time specifically, yeah. even now, are Let's mostly do it. I love identifying a individuals and the hospital administration are mostly not. Yeah. Well, and also just do your research. Like, you can decide for yourself if randomly healthy patients started dying. Yeah. That's like a paper trail. Anyway. If we learned nothing... But this one thing from Grey's Anatomy, you do not fuck with the nurses. No, you shouldn't. So I hope that they Same. spit in his food. <laughs> That's gross, but I hope they did. Well, I hope someone did. I don't know. At some point, I'm sure someone did. I hope they licked his stethoscope before he put it in his ear. <laughs> Ew. would that be gross? <laughs> so gross. It's like a wet yeah. willy by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> horrible okay even though he cleared the investigation he was like not hired to continue at that place as a resident after his internship so at least that he wasn't it wasn't allowed okay. to keep even though they had that intention when they brought him on as an intern yeah. they even said like yes and then a residency they were like no nah. yeah <laughs> should be crazy because on paper he looks like such a good candidate yeah except that bad <laughs> review <laughs> that terrible review yeah so he completes his internship and And then he returned to Quincy, and he started his work as an emergency medical technician with the Adams County Ambulance Corps. So this is, like, two things. His true love, like, being right next to people who might die, and also super fucking surprising because he was fired from a different ambulance service for making a heart patient drive to the hospital instead of taking them. Uh Uh-uh. I really feel like he just be getting away with shit, and I do not understand. Left and right. Like, a resounding WTF from everyone right now. Right now okay wait so at this point he's an er tech so he's no longer a doctor he still like is a doc he graduated medical school he just never he didn't get into a residency okay okay so at this point he's working as an er tech not a do- not a physician okay because you have yeah. to do a residency mm-hmm. and get like board certification to be a doctor so yes. he missed that step now he's an er tech okay he he will try again, but he's he's leaving it on the on the back burner of course, for now as a garbage. So his time, oh right at at this service, it's sprinkled with crazy town. So the paramedics on staff began noticing a pattern that whenever Swango was in charge of preparing coffee or bringing in any food, people, as in his colleagues, became really sick. And they could never find a cause. His co-workers? Later in that year, he was arrested by the Quincy Police Department and they found arsenic and other poisons in his possession. Uh-uh. Cue moment in the movie where things start making sense. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. You can't poison your yeah. co-workers, my dude. <laughs> I mean, you literally can. He did. But you shouldn't. That's crazy. That's crazy. Right. So it's not. Now it's less about someone dying yeah 
that's like his patient and the power dynamic. It's more about just poisoning people for the sake of poisoning yeah. people. And people that worked with you. Also, like, what if they had died? You're trying to be a mass murderer? Like, that's a mass murder, right? Oh, he's 100% a mass oh, murderer. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah, well, at the end, I'm going to tell you the stats of what the FBI thinks that he actually did, and it makes him, like, the most prolific <gasps> serial killer in the U.S. No way! Okay, If okay, the FBI going. is right. Yeah, you're so hyped right now. I'm so hyped. <laughs> Y'all, Sydney's eyes just fell out of her head. Yeah, I love a murder. A murder so story. he was arrested. He went to court. He was convicted of aggravated battery for poisoning his co-workers Uh he was sentenced to only five years in prison for that no yes Uh uh. it's a trash kebab but the conviction set off alarm bells in other places so he's convicted then the dean of the law school at ohio state james meeks wrote that the hospital of ohio state should have called in a criminal investigation of him while he was there because of those several shortcomings, including the nurse. hundred percent. Right. There were talks at the, at this time of bringing charges of murder and attempted murder against him mm. because of those alarm bells. But there wasn't enough physical evidence for them to feel comfortable pursuing that at this specific oh, time, shit. which I believe is the problem. Because as you'll see, the FBI be following him around for a long time until they have evidence. Good. The FBI be following. Follow his ass. As they number should. Number one. But number two, like, <laughs> as a medical professional, when you have, like, one patient, so many people come into contact with that one patient. So it would be really hard to narrow down that you're the one doing it, I bet. Yeah. Plus, he had, like, sneaky ways. Oh. So he served his time. He was released in 1989, and he needed a job. Bullshit. So what should he yeah. do, you may ask, like, for his job? He found work as a counselor at the State Career Development Center in Newport News, Virginia. I'm sorry, what? A counselor. Right. I don't... I Why can't. would you... How could you... Who would... Hire him. No. No. Absolutely not. This is like the worst job, right, for this creep. Yeah. But it didn't last long, so not, not super worried. The abrupt end was brought about by him keeping a scrapbook of disasters, as he did, and he was working on it during his work, like, at work, <laughs> and they this saw man. him working on his, his disaster <laughs> murder scrapbook. They were like, my guy, you got to go. My guy, you got to go. go. Yeah. As a counselor, can you imagine if you saw your counselor- Working on a murder scrapbook. Wow, I really need to talk to someone, and he's like, yeah, just give me one second, and he's like cutting and pasting? <laughs> no. He's so creepy. So what I, I, what I think he- was is like a counselor for career people like that needed okay career which is even worse because this man has no he cannot get his career together no. because he'd be poisoning he'd be people. poisoning people <laughs> and keeping creepy scrapbooks you can't do that so oh he got fired then he landed as a lab tech for ati coal yeah during this time do you think everything was cool and no one was getting poisoned no do you think that? no, no right. you're correct several employees sought medical attention after he started working there with complaints of pain in their stomachs oh it was at this time that he met Kristen kinney who's a nurse at riverside hospital they fell in love how i don't know which makes me question <laughs> Kristen's judgment at the least, yeah. <laughs> at the very least. Yeah. And they planned to get married. In 1991, the year of our birth. The year of our birth. He resigned <sighs> because he wanted to seek a job as a doctor again. No. Get the fuck out. No. <laughs> no. And the FBI later questioned these employees several times after the resignation to try and tie him to something because they were like, something's going on. They were following yeah. him around at this point. How was he getting poisoned still? I mean, I guess you can poison people with anything, but like you can get poison you can get like rat poison. Like basically. it would be hard to get your hands on like arsenic, I think. He'd be having like separate fridges. He'd be carrying around oh. double syringes. <gasps> Sneaky bitch. Sneaky okay, first snack. of all, we need to talk about his wife. Kristen. Background check your significant others. I'm not saying do like a government one, but just do like a quick Google search. Period. Right? This is 1991. You could have gone to a library and used a yeah. computer. I'm just saying. Yeah. If the FBI is following someone when you decide to marry them, you done fucked up. So he didn't know that they were they were onto him. Oh, okay. 
He okay. didn't know. Well, that's probably good. He really, he really thought he was like in the clear. You'll see. You will be shocked at the lengths this man goes to to think he's in the clear. Yeah. Like he's not. He's like n- almost never in the clear after Ohio, and he's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm in the clear. <laughs> like, no, you're but not. He keeps getting away with it. I don't blame him. But they were like, we had to wait until we had enough evidence to stick all of it to him. Yeah. So okay. So he wants to be a doctor again. He's like. I can't be a counselor, whatever. I don't want to be a lab tech. I want to be a doctor. And Kristen is like... He's tried many Kristen jobs. Kristen is like, that's a great <laughs> idea for you, right? She's in love with him. I don't understand. Kristen, you know, my dog. So he's then he changes his yeah. name. That's always a good sign of character and nothing suspicious going on. He just randomly changes his name to Daniel J. Adams. You can't just do that. Right? He deadass did. He applies to a residency program at the Ohio Valley Medical Center in Wheeling, West Virginia, and started working at Sanford USD Medical Center with his new name. I'm sorry. This is in the 90s. Yes. In both of these situations, he forged tons of documents okay. and lied okay. because he was trying to reestablish himself as a like you know respected member of society and not a pile of murdering trash. Which he so was, yeah. <laughs> he he totally was yeah. a pile of murdering trash. That's crazy. So of the forgeries, some include a fact sheet from the Illinois Department of Corrections that falsified his criminal record, saying that instead of con- being convicted for you know felony poisoning. And, and like aggravated battery or whatever, he was convicted for a misdemeanor misdemeanor of a fight with a coworker, and that he was in prison for six months instead of a felony poisoning situation. Which I would still, as someone looking, I'd be like, "Why did you get six months in prison for a for a fight. physical altercation?" Yeah, right. Yeah, and he forged a restoration of civil rights letter from the governor of Virginia stating that his right to vote and serve on a jury had been restored based on reports from other people that Swango was, like, not committing other crimes and it was just being, like, an awesome person. He forged a letter from the governor of Virginia. <laughs> That's so f- ballsy. <laughs> it's, I was... The balls you would have to ba- have to be like, I am writing from the governor's I'm office. fine. <laughs> Actually, the governor says I'm fine. The governor is my best friend. I go eat yeah, there every bros, day. Yeah, we're bros, actually. So, so, yeah, he's, like, forged a shit ton of documents. I was just like, here you go. And people were like, sounds nice. And, like... Love it, yeah. Passed him on. So while he was cur- at Sanford, he had a great reputation. And I think he got a little big for his britches. Because he was like, I'm getting yeah. away with shit. I'm getting away with shit. So he, he was like, <laughs> does the dance. Yeah, dance. Getting away with shit, dance. I'm getting <laughs> away with shit. That's what he was doing. Yeah. He made a huge mistake at this point, And he tried to join the American Medical Association, or AMA, mm-hmm. which did a better background check than the medical center he was working at, which is also alarming in all. It's just, I'm alarmed. Just yes, alarmed. quite alarming. <laughs> I feel like, alarmed. Why? I'm alarmed. Yes. They found out about the poisoning conviction, and so did the Discovery Channel, <laughs> which the Discovery Channel, which aired an episode of Justice Files that included a segment on Swango. <laughs> yes, I'm... for poisoning his coworkers. Sure, sure. I'm shook. It. Yeah, as you should. Let the Discovery Channel catch Let... you. They gonna discover. After that AMA report and that episode, and calls from employees. <laughs> To his place of employment, yeah. he obviously gets fired from Sanford. Duh. Okay, Kristen left him. Yeah. After this point, moves away. The only smart thing that she's done. The only smart thing. So then she had actually started suffering from like severe migraines also, and like couldn't figure out why she had migraines. Had never had migraines before. And after she left him, physically removed herself and like started living somewhere else, she stopped having migraines. Oh, my God. Wait, does he have, like, Munchausen by proxy? I don't know. I think he's just a psycho. You know what that is? Yes. Yes. Like Like the thing where you make people around you sick so that you can, um, like, take care of them, I guess. Maybe he has that, too. Yeah, but he didn't take care of anyone. He just poisoned the shit out of them and was like, good luck, bitch. (laughs) I don't think that's Munchausen, then. (laughs) That's just asshole syndrome. That was good. So... Then Swango goes into the wind, and the a- no one can find him for a bit. A minute, mm-hmm. he ends up in a psychiatric residency program <sighs> at the State University of New York at Stony Brook Medical S- uh, School of Medicine. Y'all, his first—I can't—I don't 
I can't. I don't. I can't. I don't. Like, it just keeps failing up, and it's so yes. frustrating. It is that white man success pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Literally. That's what he's doing. <laughs> I'm shook. So I was like, wait a minute. He got into a psychiatric residency program. So the yeah. psychiatrists were like, yeah, this one's a bop. No. No. Aren't you supposed to judge people? Yeah. And know what's wrong with them? Yeah. Something is really wrong with this guy. They should have met this guy and been like, mm, mm. nah. Seems sus. <laughs> Pass. Also, like, are you not checking university records? Are you not calling and verifying? Where is he getting the reference like, letters? Is he foreging those? He's foreging all these documents. Oh, yes. nah. This is why you got to call references. Right. So his first stop is in internal medicine, where when he arrived, patients began dying for no reason. Okay. A pattern. Now, trigger warning. Trigger warning. Please fast forward at least 30 seconds. So, remember, yeah. Kristen had left him and was like, bye. His wife, yeah. Around this time that he started, like, poisoning people in New York, Kristen actually commits suicide. <gasps> oh, my God. And her mother began to find out who Swingo really was. Oh, my God. So, she got in touch with the Sanford's dean. Yeah. And then told them, like, Swingo's whereabouts in New York. Good for her. That dean called the dean of Stony Brook, okay. whose name is Jordan Cohen. Where he's working in New York now. Yeah, he's in New York. Okay. So they call okay. the dean. So the dean is like, wait, what the fuck? So, and, yeah. like, calls an alert, major alert, red alert, mayday, mayday, right? Yeah. So calls Swango in for questioning. He endures like quote unquote intense questioning from the head of the psychiatry department, Alan Miller, where he admits that he did lie about everything. Yeah. He tells them, yeah, I did it. And That's then he was fired. Duh. Yeah. There was a huge public outcry when this all came to light. So much so that Miller, the head of psychiatry and Co- Cohen, the like Dean of Stony Brook, they're forced to retire or like resign. As they should be, I think. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Before he resigned, Cohen sent a warning about Swingo to all 125 medical schools in the United States. Good. And all 1,000 teaching hospitals in the country. Good. Yeah. Which basically blacklisted Swingo from a medical residency or continuing his medical education in the U.S. Good for him. Yeah. So in theory, this could be the end, right? He would be like blacklisted. Yeah. But it's tragically not because oh my Lord. he just be finding ways to practice poisoning people. What? No. Yes. So, like at this point, I feel like Cohen has done his due diligence. That's what you have to do. Yeah. But this man is just a sneaky bitch. Yeah. So. The reason that the feds are involved is because one of those recent occurring incidents with Swangle was at a VA, like a veteran affairs facility. So the feds yeah. could get involved because it was like a federal kind of system that he was involved in. That that put him on on their list. Yeah. He goes dark again after after they like released him from New York. He's like, fuck, I got to find a new job. Yeah. Until like 1994, where the FBI finds that he's living and working in Atlanta as a chemist at a computer equipment <sighs> company's wastewater facility. Oh, no. Nah. He's trying yeah. to poison everybody. So the, <laughs> so the FBI was like, we can't do anything, but we got to tell the facility yeah. about who he is. So the FBI goes to that facility and it's like, here's Swango. Here's who you hired. They immediately fired him. They're like, well, shit. <laughs> fired him. Yeah. The FBI gets a warrant now for fraudulent credentials okay. around that VA application. But they were a little late to scoop him right away, and he fled <gasps> the country. No way. He skips on over to Zimbabwe. Why Zimbabwe? I don't know. They probably have, like, no extradition laws or something like that. So he gets a job at Minet Hospital based on... You guessed it. Forged documents. Oh, my God. And what do you think starts happening here? He starts killing people. That's what he loves. Bitches start dying part 45. Nah. But the poisonings here took a full year to be traced back to him. He actually sued his bosses at a rural hospital in Zimbabwe for wrongful dismissal, and he was aided by a civil rights attorney because he claimed this was malicious action due to his religious beliefs because most of the population was not Christian and he was Christian. Um, <laughs> I bet that attorney t- was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yes. In yes. retrospect. <laughs> yes. 
And it's also said that he was four, he was 42 years old at the time, and he would tell people he was 27. I'm sorry. <laughs> Which is another crime to add to the list at this point, really. Beg your pardon? He would just tell people he was 27. If you're 42, you don't look 27. I'll tell you that right now. You could say you're in your 40s. <laughs> you, could say, you could say you're in your 40s. You could maybe say late 30s. You could say I'm 38 to 45. That's I'm 29, and I can barely say I'm 27. So. So careful with what you say there swango swango so eventually he was charged with these crimes and he got a lawyer david coltart Mm -hmm. but he skipped town again and wound up in zambia so coltart would later recall he conned a lot of us ably assisted by the authorities who refused to prosecute him that sounds exactly accurate yeah yep coltart was also confused as to why swango would go to court having the string of shit trailing behind him. Once he realized who he was, he was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. While he was at that hospital, um, Menini, Menini, I don't know, hospital, um, people said of him, we thought he was an angel of mercy coming to save people, but it was not long before we saw that this was not a very nice man. He turned out to be an angel of death. And that was actually, I remember, it was like a nun who was working at that hospital who was like, he was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a verbatim quote from that nun. <laughs> he was a bitch. I don't want to misquote her, but it felt right. Yeah. So he liked to do rounds at that hospital alone. And he was. this is when people started noticing he was carrying two syringes. No. And he had a small little fridge off in the corner that had his own supply of drugs that nobody was allowed to be in. Absolutely not. No. I did want to share a story I found about one of the patients that interacted with him i'm not gonna say um this person's name when he was in zimbabwe right yes yeah okay so this patient had suffered from sores on left his left toes which resulted actually in the amputation of his left foot up to his heel the wound was like basically healed he was waiting news of a prosthesis from a swedish charity so that he could continue working they had only removed it up to the heel because like that's that would still allow him to work he was a farmer okay um, one night, he says that he fell asleep and he felt somebody pulling down his pajama bottoms. Okay. Uh, he woke up to see Dr. Mike, which is what they called him, standing over the bed with an injection, which he put into my butt. <gasps> like, he gave him an injection. Yeah. He saw him give him the injection. Yeah. Then he put it in his jacket pocket, waved goodbye, and walked away. Uh-uh. He was like, okay, Dr. Mike is giving me a shot. Tried to go back to sleep, but then felt his whole body go <sighs> numb. He was not able to move, so he tried to shout for help. He said he couldn't barely breathe. He felt faint. He managed to make, like, enough of a sound that a nurse rushed to his side. He told her what had happened, and Swango was called. Swango lied and denied the story. He said that the same thing had happened at that other hospital, and he didn't understand why people were lying about him, basically saying that it was civil rights. They were lying about him because, you know, I mentioned that he was suing them for wrongful termination because he was Christian. Even though they later found that syringe top under the bed oh yeah from that like proof yeah nurses said they couldn't do anything because he was the doctor yeah so this guy lived he did survive but the entire limb became septic really quickly (sighs) even though it was healing properly right so it was perfectly fine he was about to get a prosthetic and now it's septic he had to have his leg amputated up to his knee and now he lives on his plot of land he can't work he can't farm (sighs) So he's, like, destitute. That's so sad. Oh, that's rough. That's a rough story. I know. That's just, like, one of many, right? Yeah. So. He probably thought that guy was going to die and not be able to, like, say anything about it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And he waved at him. Can you imagine? Oh, that's so creepy. The wave is the creepiest part, I think. <laughs> I know. Bye-bye. I know. We're like, he's like, bye-bye. <laughs> no, it's, su- it's super creepy. So record of him services again because he applies for a job at the Royal Hospital in Dharan, which I believe is in Saudi, Saudi Arabia, um, mm-hmm. using a false resume, which is, like, super crazy for him. Naturally. <laughs> well, all this is going on, the criminal investigator Tom Valerie consulted with a forensic psychiatrist, Charlie Thomason, back in the States. So they're, like, bringing all the pieces mm-hmm. together to try and get this guy, even though he's in another country, they're still putting pieces together. And they're yeah. now trying to be able to put, um, like, murder, charge him with, like, these murders, right? Sure, yeah. Um, because of the expertise that these two people 
came together, they're extremely experienced in the field. They were able to review documents, evidence, and create a profile of Swango. Okay. They were called to discuss how to get enough evidence to hold him. And they came yeah. up with a, le- a list of reasons and put it in front of a judge. And they got the okay to arrest him, like, basically on site. So there's, like, a warrant yeah. now for his arrast. Okay. Immigration and Naturalization Service agents arrest him at Chicago O'Hare on a layover back to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So they get his ass, right, at Chicago. They're like, yeah. we got your ass. They compile- Can you imagine if they hadn't? I, Nope. First what of if all, they missed him? Oh, uh, well, it's so scary. I don't think he would have gotten away with a bunch in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Just like you don't, I don't know. Having compiled all this evidence, they displayed what they had to Swango. They they said, "Look, yeah, look what we got on your ass." Yeah, faced with the evidence of fraud and the possibility of further discovery into Zimbabwe because yeah. they were starting to cooperate across internationally, the investigation on both sides. Okay, he did plead guilty to defrauding the government in 1998. Later that year, he was sentenced to three and a half years in prison just for defrauding the government. Joking? They didn't show him anything about the murders yet. Okay. They were still holding that kind of like to the side. Okay. They were just like, look at all this fraud. But also, people get like You're three trash. and a half years in prison for like a little bit of weed in their con, whatever. Exactly. No. Nope. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. Not a fan. So in the sentencing, even though it was about fraud, the judge ordered that Swango could have nothing to do with making or delivering, preparing, or any other involvement in food and drugs in the prison. Like, he could have no food and drug job. Yeah, somebody should have said that fucking 10 years ago. But it was funny to me because he wasn't um, convicted for that. But because But the judge was like, nah. The judge was like, well, nah. You seem shady. (laughs) But the government was using this time to build their stack of crimes and evidence against him. So once they had him, they were just trying to get him in prison. And then they were like, okay. Okay. Now let's really pin these murders on him. They actually got the go-ahead to exhume bodies of three of his patients. And they found poisonous chemicals in their bodies still. Oh, wow. Yes. They also found evidence that he paralyzed another patient with an injection who later lapsed into a coma and died. Oh, my God. Another gr- uh, crime that was regarding lying about the death of one patient when he was an intern. He claimed she yeah. had suffered heart failure, but they found that he had actually murdered her by giving her a potassium injection that stopped her heart. That's crazy. Potassium is how they do, like, lethal injections. Exactly. What so a they, psycho. They're compiling, they're interviewing, and ejecting evidence for, like, all of these years. Then, on July 11, 2000, which is less than a week away for when he was going to be released yeah. on the fraud charges, the fred- federal prosecutors on Long Island filed a huge criminal complaint against him with three counts of murder, Ooh. one count of assault, one count of mail fraud, one count of com- conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and all like counts of false statements. During this time, the Z- Zimbabwean authorities charged him with poisoning seven yeah. patients, five of whom ended up Oh, my dying. God. Also, close yes. call. One week before he's going to be released. Y'all, like, putting yeah. up a nail biter. <laughs> I, but I think they were kind of like... Wanted him to think he was going to get out. Oh, maybe so, yeah. I think that they were like, get you, beach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he probably thought he was going to his, like, last meeting. And they yeah. were like, so, about your release, you never going to leave. Psych. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. So he's, like, formally indicted on July 17th. And he pleaded not guilty like the trash that he is. Naturally. Okay. Then he starts thinking about the situation. <laughs> And he's like, Uh wait a minute. He ended up pleading guilty to murder and fraud charges. Oh, really? He did this because he was facing the death penalty if he didn't Mm. plead guilty. And they were going to extradite him to Zimbabwe. And he said, I'm trying to live in a Zimbabwe jail. (laughs) Thank you. At his sentencing hearing, prosecutors read passages from his own notebook that described the joy he felt during his crimes. You don't keep a journal of it, you asshole. You do if you keep a scrapbook. (laughs) Oh, what a psychopath. They're like, do you like this? He's like, no, I never did this. So they're like, let me just quote your own words. Oh, with your journal. No. You have a journal. He's so, he's so gross. Yeah, with a journal. You have a murder journal? Well, he was sentenced to three consecutive life You're terms. super dying in this jail, yeah. From that. You are super good. Good, hell yeah. Then on October 19th, 2000, in less than 30 minutes, another matter was settled. This is another murder yeah. case. He pled guilty to the murder for a death that he did 
cause in 1984, mm-hmm. and he was sentenced to life in prison with the chance of parole. But this happened on top of the other three life sentences, yeah. aka you not getting out of prison. So he's sentenced to like four life sentences. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, that murder was during his one month rotation in neurosurgery in that wing of the OSU Medical Center. Five deaths were deemed questionable <gasps> at that time, but they had only been one for oh sure on him. And he showed absolutely zero emotion the entire time. In court, he was just like, yes, I did That's that. That's crazy. And just sat there and stared. But sometimes yes. I hate when they can only pin one on them because it feels like the families of the other five or the other four people are not really getting justice because it's not getting brought up. You know, their names are not being brought up. Exactly, yeah. All in all, he is suspected and, like, can be directly attributed to, in some way, the deaths of over 30 individuals. <gasps> However, That's a lot. the FBI actually thinks he's connected and responsible for 60 deaths, which would make him that worst asshole and, like, the most prolific serial killer. Yeah, 60? ever. 60. Yes. My Lord. That's so crazy. So he didn't really vary his methods of murder. He had, like, two, like types of murder he would either yeah. use poisons like arsenic for his like co-workers and loved ones oh sure <laughs> how you do and with his patients right he would use poisons sometimes and or he would just overdose oh, them for drugs okay. they were already prescribed or he wrote fa- false prescriptions for dangerous drugs when the patients did not need them when asked for a motive the principal prosecutor assistant u.s attorney gary brown said basically dr swingo liked to kill people And that's what I know about that. That is (laughs) astonishing. You did such a good job. That was so good. Are you shook? I hate him. I am shook. I don't know what to say besides... Goddamn. This guy is like a total sociopath. Wow. He's super ugly, too. Did you look him up? I feel like... No, let me look him up. Their first line of prosecution should have been his face your honor look at him (laughs) he did it he did it look at him your honor look at this man when he's in court he is guilty (laughs) i rest my case like like when i started the episode like he's a creep that's the end that's it this man is a fugly slut do not trust him (laughs) that period that would have been my mean girls reference defense and i would have been like we rest our case the crime i will say the crime junkie podcast did an episode on him yeah and it's pretty good. And I, I recommend if you want to know even more details. Um, I really try to keep it to, like, the medical stuff. And, like, he bopped around so much. That was really good. And then there's, um, like, a book. Yeah. The Blind Eye, The Terrifying Story of a Doctor Who Got Away with Murder um, yeah. by James Stewart. You should, like, if you are, like, I want to know more about him. I read a couple, like, sections of it. And it's really oh, good. Oh, I want to read it so bad. He's a piece of trash. But he's in forever jail now. Good. He's still alive? Mm -hmm. (gasps) Mm-hmm. No way. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, you did such a good job. That was I was on the edge of my seat literally the whole time. You were like gasp. I feel like this is one of the craziest murder stories I've ever heard. And you know I've listened to a bunch. It's really crazy. I'm gonna be thinking about this, I feel like, for a long time. If the prosecuting attorney is like, yeah, he just likes to kill people. And the judge is like, yes, I agree. Bye-bye. Bury that man. But I do think it's good for him. (laughs) I don't even believe in the death penalty, but. I'm not. I do think it's good for him to live forever in a Did he ever say he was sorry or anything like that? I'm so shook. No. He never said anything to the. That's so selfish. I I mean, he's a murderer, but also. He was just like, I did it. Oof. Oof, that was so good. Damn, I love the story. I mean, I hate it, but I I love how you did it. You did a really good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you should look him up. He's absolute trash. Hot garbage. Um, thanks for listening, you guys. Go subscribe. Leave us a review. Go watch something happy about ponies and nice things kittens maybe yeah go cleanse your brain after this because this was a rough one thanks for thanks for listening if you have a reco and you read something or you see something dm us on our social meds let us know what you want to hear we will keep on keeping on bringing the 
Medical Crimington. Yeah. Or you can send us an email at malpracticepodcast at gmail.com. So we'll link all of those things in our show notes, including the Crime Junkie podcast about it, because we love Crime Junkie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. And don't forget, malpractice, malpractice makes, makes perfect. perfect. <laughs>